How's it going, Jake? Oh, all right, you know. I like that. A little attachment thingy to connect the uh, base of the trailer and the lorry together. Nice, good. Right, well, Shedhackers, just to uh, start us off today with a new clip. Um, today we're going to be making a stool. I've made one already, there it is. And we'll be doing various clips on how it's made. It's about 700 millimetres tall. And here's the design. Jake's been watching me make it from scrap wood. And I think that's something we've been really trying to focus on. Um, I'm just going to turn down the light because it's making it flash a little bit. But uh, there's the design. I think uh, you can see all the details there. And it's in orthographic. That's a 2D drawing. Shows the end view here and the side view there. Um, it's not the same as my original design. I have changed it um, a little bit, but um, I'm pleased how it's gone, Jake. Are you? I mean, yeah. It's a nice, nice little project, that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's um, pretty comfortable. And so. it's all made from recycled wood. Just turn it around, Jake, so we can see it. So that's what we're going to try and do today. Um, the top's been made out of recycled curtain. And um, also like one of those sleeping camping mats. Yes, we use that, a little piece of that for the top to make it spongy. So, that's what we're doing today, guys. Catch you later. Shed hacks. Hi, guys. We're going to be making a chair from this, Jake. There's the wood. This is the wood we've got from the old decking from the garden. Some of it's even got bits of old um, paint on it still. We've planed it and we've tried to get it as nice as we can for the moment. So that's the wood. That should make the whole chair, or stool rather. There's the design, Jake. Any questions on the design? Because I'm going to get you to make it, I think. Um, what's that part? Uh, that's a mistake. Keep that away. Uh, this is the best bit here. And that's my first design. So not sure if it's going to work. But we'll perhaps return back to that as we go. So you can see some sizes there. I mean, I'll try and keep to those. And what other questions may you ask me, Jake? Um, what tools are we using? Yeah, well, there you go. They're the tools. Can you name these tools? Uh, so that's a mallet. And this is marking a... Marking gauge. Good, marking gauge, yeah. And this is a... A tenon saw, and a bench hook. And a... A big tri-square. Yeah, large one. And a... A chisel. Yeah, a bevel-edged. Look, bevel. Bevel on it. And we use probably a mortise chisel as well, which I'll show you. A ruler. And what's this? A uh, tape measure. Yep, tape measure. Okay. Yes, Jake. And we even use the hoover. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So while I'm making this stall uh, for the viewers on YouTube, what will you be doing, Jake? I'll be making a truck. Oh, this you mean? Ah. So this is one to look out for, viewers. This is Jake's truck. He's well, that's part of it. There's the truck there. So look out for the next clip on this. I think this even tip. Oh, yeah. Tip. Oh, that tips forward, <laughs> and the seats tip forward. Look out for that over the next few weeks, I suppose. Dad, what are you doing now? Well, I've started to make the little side rails out of this scrap wood I've got. You can see it's a bit rough, but there's the beginning of the mortise and tenon. That's the mortise part. I might take a little bit off the side there for the shoulder. And this is going to be where it slots into the top as a bridle joint, the top of the chair, or stool rather. Is that all right, Jake? Anything else? Mm -hmm. I just a little demo there for the... Uh, there we go, so down there neatly, and here, and the same on the other leg. Okay, back your leg. I think that's got it. Trim it. It's a bridle joint, guys. See if it fits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not brilliant, but you know, it's it will be okay. Right, Jake? Yeah. The chair project going all right. That's going to be the Morton tenon. In fact, actually, yes, it's going to be this size there. That's going to go in there. That's the bottom yeah. of the legs. And I'm just going to sharpen the chisel, holding it at about 30 degrees. So how are you doing that? It's in a figure of eight. So this is a um, slip stone for sharpening the chisel. You buy um, these online, about yeah. 15 pounds. What's that red stuff on it? That's just a little bit of um, oil you can buy for the slip stone, mm. oil stone, some people call them. About 30 degrees, it varies on the chisel, and it varies a little bit on the application. You yeah. keep it nice and 
circular. Try and use the whole of the stone if you can. And then once you've done your figure of eight a hundred times or so, <laughs> not quite many, uh, turn it over. It has to be flat, completely flat. And try and use again the whole of the stone so you're not causing the stone become hollow in any way. And then take it off, get it the white. And that should be razor sharp. Should be. Shouldn't <laughs> see any light coming off it. I'm just going to do a little bit more. There's a figure of eight again. At 30 degrees. Sometimes it's slightly high angle. Depending on the chisel, of course. Go on nine, you can find out the, the angles. About 30 to 32 degrees. And there should be no light coming off that blade tip. None at all. Any light that's coming off that blade on the very edge is still blunt. Okay, come back to you later. Dad, alternative, yep, yep, yep. What have you done there? Oh, yeah, this is alternative method. You can put the old flat cutters in. Go down a bit deeper. That's alternative. And then lay off the waste. Nice sharp chisel. And there. It's got to be vertical. Alright, and you just do that all the way around. Keeping wow. the edges nice and sharp. And clean. That's a quicker method, but You'll need um, perhaps an adult to help you with that. There you go. And that will fit that eventually. Might even wow. go now. All right. Okay. How's it going? Oh, yeah, it's going well, actually. Just finishing off this um, tenon here on this mortise and tenon joint. I'm glad you've asked me, actually, now. I can probably put it together. I've labelled it all up. It's all labelled. Here's the mallet I'm moving. Um, A goes in A, that's going to go in there, hopefully, yeah. Now the wood's actually quite, um, it's a little bit damp I notice because it's been out and it hasn't properly dried, but it's not too bad. They're the bridle joints, can you see how they slot in? So that goes oh, in yeah. there, and that goes in there. I'll just keep the camera there, Jay. I'll just tap that in there, ready? In there. Yeah, can you see it's tapered? It's slight at an angle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, they've gone in well. I thought I thought it was at an angle because you made it like. Yeah. You, it's you did a couple of cuts wrong. No, no, no. Look, you can see it's mm. tapered. Can you see? Like a stalk. So I've got to make two of those. Glue them with some PVA glue. And but some. Before clamps. you do that, um, it's probably better. Um, viewers is to clamp it dry and just see if it's all nice and level and also work out if you've got the right size clamps yeah clamp it beyond the joint not over the joint because you'll try and crush the, your own piece of wood in if you like so just there don't go mad there let's just tighten it up can you see it going wow. in there you go okay it's dry it's it's not bad a little twisted i can get that out we're clamping it differently. Perhaps lay that flat and lay that high. Yeah, that's done it almost. Wow. Okay, that's beginning to So two of those will do. So what's next? Well, that's the bridle joint there. And I've labelled it up. Two and two. One and one. Uh, a there. A and A. And that's the mortise and tenon joint. You can see it's not square. It's not meant to be square. It's meant to be as tapered as chair stools are. So that's been carefully designed. And this is the second side. Yes, Jake. So why is it tapered? Uh, it makes it more stable. Stops ah. it falling over. Yeah, but you, straight, if it had straight edges, legs, I think it would fall over if it was that narrow all the way down very easily. And I'm marking up the other side. This is exactly the same as that one now. So that will go there. I'm already marking up three and three, four and four. And this will be C and D. Okay? Really important you don't mix it up. That's the depth of the uh, mortise and tenon joint. The mortise is the hole, the tenons, the little lip sticking out. So I'll come back to you and hopefully when you see me next, or see us next, 
they'll all be um, made. There is just one thing, Jake, that viewers might want to know. Although I've cut this square, can you see there's a slight gap there? Mm -hmm. Now, actually, when I clamp it, because the wood's so soft, it does actually sink in slightly. But I may have to just take a little piece out, literally a millimetre there. Can you get right on there? A little piece out there of a chisel to ensure that the shoulder of the joint, the bit that sits there, sits really neatly. If I can open that slightly, yeah, I shouldn't really do that. Sits neatly in there. Can you see? So there's not a gap. All right, come back to you later, girls. Is the marking gauge really useful? Well, you can mark it up with a ruler and divide your, you know, your um, bridle joint into uh, the thirds you, you, you want. And it could be equal thirds, but it doesn't have to be. Um, or you can mark it up with the uh, marking gauge, with the two pins there. Okay, carefully mark it up by adjusting it. Quite tricky. Then you can get your wood and literally score it down and make those marks. And you can do the same on the other side. The nice thing about the marking gauge, as long as it doesn't come loose, you've got the same marking. So I can turn it over and I can use that to mark up yeah, all the sides. Can you see that, Jake? Yeah. All right, can you see that? Marked up. And then you go round with your tri square and you mark off the shoulders. This is on the bridle joint. But, um, you can do the same for mortise and tenon joint. Okay. Hope that helps viewers a little bit. Go over it with a pencil if you want to make it a bit darker. But the marking gauge, I think, is quite a good start. It's good practice to use a marking gauge. And you can use the marking gauge on the end. If you're doing that, I'd put this in the vise and hold it firmly and score it down to give your lines. All right. Okay, Jake. There you go. There you go got this chair made yet? Yeah? Well, the design is slightly changed, so, but they're the two sides. Okay, they're identical. The word is symmetrical, can you see? And that's pretty well the idea. There's the bridle joints. So, I've got to now join these. Does that look good so far, Jake? Yeah. So if I put that down there, you can see sort of how big it's going to be. Brilliant. What are you doing now? Right, well there's the side. There's another side. So I'll go like that. Cut that mortise and tenon joint to fit in there. And that one will go into there. And then this will go on top. And there'll be another set at the bottom. Wow. What do you think, Jake? I think it's good. Thanks, Jake. So, are you enjoying this so far? I am actually, Jake. This is going really well. It's all scrap wood. Just getting these lines up to be perfect. And I'm going to put another mortise and tenon joint here. And then that will eventually be in there. I could even do a halving joint, couldn't I? Yeah. And then that will be the last pieces. Mm, there'll be one there, of course, going inside. And then I'll design the top part, the seat part, and I think that'll look brilliant. I'm really happy. What do you think, Jane? I think it's good, but one little improvement I think you could make is you only have one of these here, so if you don't want to put your feet on anything, you can just turn the stool around. I could do that, Jake. Yes, I could put it on the inner So rail. then it's even more u universal or something like that. Just have one on the middle. Yeah. I'll have to think about that. Good point. So how's the recycled chair going on? Uh, this recycled wood chair, yeah. Well, I've done the frame with the joints, the bridle joints, and the mortise and tenon joints here. It's not clamped yet, but you can see the beginnings of the joints. <laughs> if I put it on the table there, Jake, you can also see I've done this, this joint in the middle here middle rail. I mean the wood's not brilliant quality but um, when it's all glued together I'm sure it'll look great but I've got the actual joints there. I'm actually going to use this plane, Jake, I'm going to use that plane now and I'm going to plane up all the sides and the corners and get it really neat and I might even finish off some little edges with a block plane. 
So are you going to take it apart to do that? Yeah, I'm going to take one piece off at a time, making sure I keep the codes, you know, N with N and B with B and so forth, and get this sort of sawn looking timber into now plain timber. And then we're going to take this sharp corner off here, um, and uh, I'll come back to you and hopefully we'll have a more of a finished piece. I've got to sort something out for the top there, so, you know. All right, take, I've taken one of the legs off. I've kept the codes on so I know where it's going to go back in. Really important, guys. And then I'm starting to plane the wood with my smoothie. Uh, well, my jack plane, actually. Um, a large jack plane. Okay, the triplane, the big ones, the really long ones are triplanes. Um, so this is a triplane, and we're just taking off. There's a saw mark there, Jake. And you need a little bit of strength on this, and the blade must be dead razor sharp. And you take off that, you see, and you small yeah. piece of time. And that blade must be dead sharp. Okay, put oh. a plane on its size, it doesn't damage. You can turn it on its corner here, and you can get that sharp edge off. And you can just gradually take off that sharp edge. Not too much. If you adjust the blade, you wind the handle anti-clockwise or clockwise depending if you want it deeper or shallower anti-clockwise out so it's deeper more there you go and you have to sort of feel your way through using your plane so I'll turn that clamp it in your vice flat you could do, clamp it down with a g-clamp I suppose at one end some people do that it has to be clamped I'm just going to make that slightly less Swishing sound is a sign of a sharp blade. If it's a dull sound, it's a poor cut. And that is good enough to varnish. No sanding needed on that. Wow. Right. Okay. How's it going? Not bad. I think, look, I've got the two frames. It's quite difficult getting this right. There. You just bear with me, Jake. <laughs> There we go, Jake. Yeah. Yes. Can you sit on it? I will be able to, but that's the beginning of the frame. Wow. And then I've, I've planed up all the edges. Looks nice. Central rail here. That piece there, central. I think I've got to turn that round. That's a correction there to make look. Anyway. Oh yeah, voice, if you yeah. didn't point it out, I wouldn't have noticed No, that. it's pretty good. I'm tapering the legs, can you see? Yeah, yeah. looks good. Right, okay, come back to you guys.